Okay guys, welcome back to the Red Embrace. Um, in the last one, I completed the most of the alternative endings for Dominic, but I still can't manage to find uh, the or uh, get to press the option for uh, say whatever uh, Bishop wants in Dominic's route. So I'll, I'll save it for later. But now, do you guys know who I would go after? Like. Uh, beside, so besides Dominic, who I want to go next, and you guessed it, it's Rex, <laughs> because he seems charming, also, and in a playful, uh, slightly impish uh, way, he is also my type. <laughs> but of course, when Dominic's here, he, 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 well, he's the second. So anyway, let's start. I'm being thirsty, <laughs> like these these vampires are being thirsty for. Uh, for blood, for blood. I'm first. I'm thirsty for some vampire dicks <laughs> or vampire asses. That's what. Okay, another regular night in San Francisco. There usually aren't many customers around this time. Just the occasional junkie or drunk guy getting a burger to try to sober up. Um. So just before before things happen, I won't skip. Uh, I won't skip in this uh, in these episodes because um. I would like a full immersion, so, and I would, um, be myself again, so not just to explore the options, but just to analyze the situation, me, as Brett Boo, to see how I would go within this story, so, maybe you guys can learn a little, a little more about me, um, okay, and here I am, staring at the whirring milkshake blender, bored out of my mind. The, more, the normal routine. I wonder how far can I go because I've got uh, six more hours to go. So I hope I can get to four or five people. Uh, or yeah, I hope I get I can get all of these people here. I glance up when the doors to the kitchen behind me suddenly swing open. It's Troy, my boss. He gives me a happy wave and grins. And I can tell he's going to call out my name in his usual friendly voice. But I can't believe I have to read this over and over again. Maybe after Rex, I would just skip the opening. Hey, Boo! Glad you decide to come in early. Yeah, boss. No problem. Alright, hang on. Whoops, guys. Sorry, the bank called. Something about the application for stuff. So, let's continue. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I probably shouldn't tell him I just need the extra money. What, does he think I come, in f I come here for fun? Kind of slow right now, huh? Well, just keep the place cleaned up until someone comes in. I'll be, back in, uh, I'll be in the back if you need me. Got it. With that, Troy disappears back into the kitchen. Leaving me all alone again. Man, I really get why they call it the graveyard shift. It feels like I'm watching over a cemetery sometimes. One that smells like greasy burgers. With a sigh, I reach for a rag and start to rub down the counter. Gonna be a long night. Long night. Ugh. Greasy burgers. That doesn't sound enticing at all. At that moment, I realize there's a customer in one of the booths. When did it get here? I definitely didn't see him walk in. It's a dark it's a guy in a dark hoodie with a slightly hunched posture. Probably around my age, maybe a year or two older. Even though he's sitting down, I can tell he's pretty tall, and he looks intimidatingly muscular despite the baggy jacket. Noise. But too bad we're not going after him. Well we had our run, we had our fun times, Dominic, so. We were happy in the parallel universe, and I'm so happy that we, we, we were together. We got together, and I succeeded. I don't know why. Like in in dating games, I all I mostly a stuff where I can get the ending that is happy and fun, and lovey dovey. But in real life, I'm like things are so damn hard. Like women are so damn difficult. <sighs> And you can't do it in, like, you can't do it in men all willy-nilly, like, who knows, probably you would wreck your reputation or your, or your relationship. 
like you had those uh, like difficult moments where you wanna uh, advance your relationship from friend to being more than a friend, but at the same time you don't want to lose that friendship. I understand. So hard in real life. Well, shady or not, a customer is a customer. I tuck a menu under my arm and stroll out from behind the counter, heading towards him. Hey, Dom, my sweet, sweet guy. He glances up when I get close, gazing me at a sharply, uh, gazing at me sharply with two bright blue eyes. But he doesn't say anything. He just stares. What the hell? Is he coming off a bad trip or something? Or is he just another rude college kid? Uh, I mean, for me, I would greet him. Putting on my most welcoming smile, I slide the menu onto the table. Hello, sir. Can I get you anything tonight? A Coke, burger, milkshake? The man blinks at me, looking taken aback by my words. Did I say something strange? I didn't think I was being too friendly, but maybe I should have acted more casually. Just coffee. Murmuring a response under his breath, he finally averts his gaze from my face. His voice is low and husky, not unpleasant, but it makes him sound a bit older than he looks. Why does he seem so tense? I wonder if there's a reason why he's acting all gloomy, or if this is just his normal, normal self. Coffee it is then. I'll be right back. I turn to head back towards the kitchen, wondering if this guy will ever would, would even leave a tip. A tip. But before I can, I can so much as take a step. A hand grabs my shirt, tugging me back. Flustered, I quickly glance over my shoulder at a strange man, who narrows his eyes at me. Has anyone come? Uh, anyone else come in here tonight? A man in leather jacket, with a tattoo on his cheek. He murmurs under his breath, staring at me so intensely that I swallow a nervous lump in my throat. Troy, this is a good, t a great, a great time for you to walk out of the kitchen. N no, no one's like that has come in tonight. Why? sinks back against the seat cushions at my reply, tightly balling one hand to her fist. After one moment, uh, he pulls a cigarette from his pockets and clenches it between his teeth. The flame from his lighter briefly flickers in his br bright blue eyes, a guilty lip flashing over his face. Sorry. I'll get out of here. Muttering qu quietly, he, th he starts to push himself out of the booth. But I shove my arm out to stop him. Surprise! At least wait until you, f you finish your coffee. It's pretty rude to come into a diner and leave without ordering anything after all. He's a weird customer, but I'm kind of curious why he's so uneasy. And this is the most interesting thing that's happened on any of my shifts too. The man hesitates, studying me with a suspicious look. Maybe he thinks I'm teamed up with this leather jacket guy. He's all worked up about. They must really have a history. Calm down. I shake my head a little, letting out a patient sigh. <sighs> Don't worry, I have no clue who Mr. Tattoo Face is. But my boss would get mad at me if I don't didn't ask a customer to stay. So, why do you stick around? Why don't you stick around? He pauses for a moment longer, and his blue eyes burn into me searchingly as if he's trying to read my true intentions. But finally, he lowers himself back into the booth, giving a reluctant nod. I'll get that coffee then. Don't run away while I'm gone. Right. With that, I hurry towards the kitchen, setting up a pot of fresh coffee to brew. Troy on his phone, chatting away with his new girlfriend, so I can't ask him if he knows that guy in the booth. He's a strange customer, even for this hour, but he doesn't seem like a bad person. I just don't want to play therapist or anything. Part of me wants to ask what he's brooding about. Would he tell a stranger, though? It seems like I can read faster, slightly more fluent. That's a good thing. When the coffee is done, I grab the cup and head back to the booth, cream and sugar tucked under my free arm. To my surprise, the man is still there. He was staring off into space before, but when I get close, his head jerks towards me. Thanks. 
He mumbles awkwardly, pulling his cigarette from his lip and snuffing it out in the ashtray. No problem. I set the coffee, along with the cream and sugar, down in front of him. But he just sort of blankly stares at the table, as if he's not sure what to do. Do you, uh, want me to, make, uh, to mix it in for you? The cream and sugar, that is. My offer makes his eyes widen, but after a brief pause, he stiffly nods. Has this guy e never had coffee before? Huh. Well, I don't really mind, even though it's been a long time since a customer asked me to do this. I grab the cream and pour some into the cup, stirring until the dark liquids turn into a pretty caramel and shade. After mixing it, uh, mixing it, mixing in a couple of spoon, a couple spoons of sugar, I push the coffee towards him expect expectantly. It's not French press, but it's not poison either. Go on. He takes up the cup and lifts it to its to his lips, looking unsure of himself. After a long sip, he blinks, and a surprised light washes over his face. It's sweet. Oh, did I put put in too much sugar in? I can get you another cup if you'd... No, it's fine. I like it. I like it. Ugh, I can't do a good Dominic voice. I don't have a charming voice. I have a charming personality, but not a charming voice. To my shock, the man's lips cur actually curl into a small smile. It makes him a lot less intimidating, and the look in his clear blue eyes softens a little. Little. He's seriously an oddball. Odd, but kind of charming in his own weird way. A guy this size who doesn't even know how to drink coffee. No, maybe he, maybe he's one of those junk, like gym junkies. Only protein shakes, nothing else. Oh, here's Luca. No, I've got no, uh, no interest in him yet. I'll save him for last because he's so much like me. <laughs> A little bit of bratty as well. Order him as well. Blah 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 blah. Uh, sure, I'll try. Blah 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 blah. Uh, uh. Blah 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 blah. Uh, come if it's safe. No interests because it's about Isaac anyway. Music. Oh! Shit! <laughs> I skipped it! I skipped it! Fuck! Okay, be right back. I'll load when 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 I hit Rex's uh Rex's seat, <laughs> sorry. Right I'm back. <laughs> I skipped it by accident. Come on with save. Blah 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 blah. I don't really care about Isaac just yet. Uh skip 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 slight skips. Okay. Blah. Blah. Bip, 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 bip. Come on, come on. Uh, so, next day. Mm. Okay. Ugh. Sun. Sun. Fuck off. <laughs> I'll, I'll start the narration here. I bury my face uh, against my pillow to hide from the sunlight. Damn, it must be already in afternoon. Stupid graveyard shift make it so hard to catch a decent amount of rest. Unless you sleep underground or somewhere away from a window. Maybe I should invest in a coffin. More style points than sleeping uh, than a sleeping mask, that's for sure. Ugh. Groaning, I eventually, I eventually force myself out of bed and stumble over a kitchen. Uh, over to the kitchen to put on some coffee. Work doesn't start for a while yet, so I can do a little freelancing today. Oh, I've read this, the, the music one, so... I love making music, even though I never had any formal training. But there's something really soothing about bringing life to the be uh, life, bringing to life the beats and melodies in my head. So I spend a lot of my free time working on new tracks. I've worked on a few small games and student films, but I'd like to really reach the stars one day, or at least get out of the bottom five percent of cloud sound, <laughs> like iTunes, and not iTunes. I mean Spotify or something. Someday, anyway. I have some stuff. I, I have some time to spare, so I plop down my office chair. Blah 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 blah. blah skip a little bit. I don't care about Isaac because he's fucked. Uh, but during my walk, I, I can't feel. I can't help feeling a lot more nervous than normal. Troy left this morning for a business trip, 
So I'm the only one who's working tonight. And if anything happens, I'll have to deal with, uh, with it entirely on my own. Great. Well, he didn't help last night, so what do you think about it? Hmm. The diner seems unusually quiet, even for the night shift. Only a couple of people end up stumbling in over the course of a few hours, and midnight ticks over the into the early morning. I grow more and more tense until finally I can't take in anymore. Time to close up early! Sorry, Troy! Grabbing my keys, I flick off all the lights and leave the diner, locking it, locking it up behind me. Then, I make my way to the nearby alley where Isaac came from last night. But it's empty. No gangsters, no men in suits. Just a deserted hangout for rats and abandoned garbage cans. Maybe I missed the meeting. Although I should have heard gunfire if there was any. I guess they might not be here yet. But I really don't want to wait around in this creepy place for very long. Especially not alone. Ugh, I should probably just head home. That's the sens sensible thing to do. Yeah. After a few more seconds of deliberation, I turn back towards the alleyway entrance. I'm not sure why I feel so disappointed. Gotcha! Yeah, here he comes! Out of nowhere, someone grabs my shoulders. A second later, my back slams against the wall, and a pair of strong arms pin me, pin me in place. Yeah, pin me in place, dude! <laughs> hey, hey, hey! You're not uh, the one who, uh, you're not one of those dumbass Seire guys. You're a human! Two wide, puzzled eyes uh, scan over my face like I'm sort of, I'm kind of mutant. A human? Uh, of course I'm human. What else could I be? I don't understand. <gasps> I break off halfway through my sentence, staring at my attacker. This red haired guy has a tattoo on his face and is wearing a distinctive leather jacket. Could, that, could he be the person that man from last night was talking about? Whoa, why are you getting all mad, man? You're just not the guy I was looking for. He flashes me with a wide, taunting grin. My eyes are drawn to the shape of his canines, which look just like an animal's. Long, sharp, and bone white. Hey, you know, you smell pretty nice. Kinda special, actually. Real sweet. He leans in a bit, leering at me with those sharp fangs. They have to be some kind of body mod, right? I'm pretty hungry too, haven't eaten all night, and you are looking so much better every second. Shit, if I don't do something, this creep will really take a bite out of me. Push him off. Get off me! Ugh. I throw every ounce of my strength into pushing the man away, but he doesn't seem uh, the least bit impressed. Instead, he just presses me harder against the wall, twisting his lips into a mockingly hurt expression. Hey, don't be like that, baby. I just want to play with you. Let me have a little taste, come on. He coos at me, starting to lean in closer again, and a sense of dread dr grips me like a vise. I shut my eyes tightly, holding my breath. This is it. I'm going to get torn apart by some psycho in the alleyway. His ragged breathing grows steadily louder, and I can feel each exhale brushing against my throat. Ugh. All, the, all of a sudden, the pressure pitting me to the wall vanishes. When I open my eyes, I realize the man's no longer there. No, he's still here, but now... You! Hey, Dom! With a loud grunt, a familiar man in dark jacket swings his fist towards my attacker. <sniffs> Fucking Dominic. I knew you were here. <laughs> the redhead lets out a gleeful laugh as he dodges the punch, moving at an incredible speed. I really should give him an imp impish playful voice. Probably, I hope my... The voice that I gave him suffices. A second later, he aims a lightning flat, night, li lightning, f God damn it, a lightning fast blow of his t of his own towards the other man, Dominic. 
With an unchanging expression, Dominic smoothly sidesteps. The next moment, his hand shoots out to swipe at his opponent's face. <clears throat> Heard the sound of something sharp cutting, sharp cutting flesh. And moments later, blood starts to drip from the redhead's, redhead's cheek. <laughs> Dom, you really are mad. Wow. Rather than counterattacking, the tattooed man pauses, wiping off the blood in his sleeve. <gasps> but before my very eyes, the claw-like gashes on his skin start to repair themselves. Until they disappear completely, leaving him uninjured. Am I going crazy? There's no way any human could do something like that. No. No, this has got to be a this has to be a bad has to be a bad dream. Just a bad, bad, shitty dream. Don't tell me worked up because of this guy. Seriously? You want to train him that bad? Enough. Don't bring him into this. Dominic's eyes add narrow into slits as he stares at the man in, in the leather jacket, who's laughing as if he just heard the best joke on earth. <laughs> Wow, wow! In that case, I'm gonna get my hands on him first. Because I want to see you get way, way madder, Dom. Rather ab abruptly, the tattooed man's face freezes, and his grins faded and fades into a frigid, bloodthirsty expression. I want to see you suffer until you stop thinking us as a fucking joke. Just like that, he charges Dominic again, recklessly swinging frantic punches. This time, though, he seems to be moving even faster than before, and his strikes are full of rage. Ugh. The, assault, uh, the assault is too powerful that Dom, Dominic retreats a little, losing a few, a few feet ground to the other man, who's clearly fu fueled by fury. They dodge and swipe at each other so quickly that my eyes can hardly follow their movements. Their speed is completely inhuman, and the more I watch, the more my blood runs cold. It's impo- it is- is it possible that they're really not human? When my mind flashes back to the redhead's sharp fangs, my stomach tightens, and a shiver racks my body. Come here, Dom. I'm not gonna let you run away this time. With a menacing howl, a ta the tattooed man leaps up. Pushing himself off the wall to launch for launch forwards towards Dominic. Ugh. Ugh. When he doesn't manage to dodge in time, their bodies collide, and they tumble to the ground. At this rate, one of them is going to end up torn open. And if I try to do something, they might turn on me. But can I really just stand here? Stop. I I mean I would stop the fight too, because I don't think they would hurt me. Like last time, anyway. I have to say something. Monster or not, I don't want to see someone get ripped apart in front of me. Dominic, stop! Just throw him off and run! Dominic seems to hear my words, but he keeps struggling with the violent redhead, who's clawing at him with everything he's got. Biting my lip, I watch the two men tussle frantically, their grunts filling the air, until... Whoa, what's going on here? Gentlemen, can you put things on hold for a moment? That's Isaac. And at that instant, the fighting stops completely. A tall figure approaches us from the alley's entrance, his face flashing in view under the street lamp. Isaac. After frowning at, Dominic's, uh, at Dominic at the tattooed man, the, I uh, the Isaac, really? Isaac turns towards me his eyebrows shooting upwards. Oh, you came after all. Sorry you had to see these two at their worst, but I did promise Dom would be here, didn't I? So, that's who Isaac was referring to. How the hell did he know that I had met Dominic? Wasn't that just a few hours before I saw Isaac? He never came into the diner either, so someone must have told him. Fuck off, Isaac! You're not gonna stop me from tearing this shithead a new- <laughs> Before the redhead can finish his sentence, Dominic suddenly throws him off with a grunt. 
He slams against the ground a few feet away, letting out a pained wheeze. Chuckling, Isaac pushes up his glasses, looking, un uh, looking completely unfazed. Really, Rex, you need to learn when to hold back. You're going to embarrass yourself. You're and you're going to embarrass yourself, even your, uh, even your Helgen brothers. Helgen and something. I forgot already. As if Isaac just flipped a switch, the leather jacket man seems to lose all of his bloodlust. Instead, he groans and rolls his eyes, looking like a kid who just got his favorite toy taken away. Ugh, whatever, stupid old man. After Rex mutters a reply, the electric tension in the air around us gradually fades. It's replaced by an uncomfortable, awkward pause, and the four of us exchange glances for a few seconds. But after the adrenaline cloud in my brain finally dissolves, I take a deep breath and turn to Isaac. Sorry to ruin the moment, but some kind of explanation for all of this would be great. My voice, which cracks slightly with anxiety, breaks the long moment of silence. Dominic, Rex, and Isaac all stare at me, and now I understand how a rabbit must feel in a den of wolves. These guys, they're not normal. You know that, don't you, Isaac? When I pose my shaky question, Isaac throws a glance towards Dominic. For a split second, it looks like Dominic winces faintly, his eyes narrowing. But a cold, unreadable look soon washes over his, over his features again. Yes, Boo, I think it's obvious by now that they're not normal. They're not normal. 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 Okay, uh, my British accent is fading. Isaac finally speaks up, and I shift my gaze back to him, to him quickly. You see, behind this bit shine gloss of our beloved San Francisco is a much, much darker underbelly. That one people like you would usually go their whole lives without glimpsing. He straightens his tie with one hand, an impassive smile flickers on, flickering on his face. But once you get a taste of that darkness, there's no going back. For instance, if a hypothetical cute little diner boy decide, decided that he wanted to go to tell the police a funny story, a tall scary man in a dark jacket would want to make sure he never says anything else again. Oh, Dom's gonna kill me. Order to kill me. At, uh, at Isaac's casual threat, I glance back at Dominic in disbelief. His lips are pulled into a grimace at he, uh, as he meets my gaze and I think I see a hint of guiltiness on his face. Does that mean he'd really kill me? Just to stop me from telling anyone what uh, about what I saw tonight. Of course, that's all hypothetical. Humans like us can work with our vampiric companions just fine, assuming that no one gets loose, uh, gets loose lips. Wait, then you're not a vampire? My shocked question make Isaac pause for a second. However, he quickly lets out a laugh and shakes his head. Oh god, the, 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 the police! Stop! Oh no! Wee woo wee woo! Uh, adjusting his tie with one hand. Okay, I should pause for a little bit, hang on. Oh god, I didn't mean to. I didn't really mean to skip, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, he stares at me with saucer-like eyes, and I stare back in astonishment. Luca? Hang on a second. Were you the one who told Isaac that I met Dominic? As bizarre as the whole situation is, the pieces are starting to fall to into place. This little brat was trying to get me into to tell him about shady types. In other words, find, find people who might be vampires for him. Lucas, Lucas surprised, then flustered. Reaction confirms my suspicions, and he averts his gaze sheepishly. So, yeah, so? It was pretty clear you were trying to protect him. At that, Lucas's eyes flick over to, uh, towards Dominic, taking on a certain sharpness. He glances over Rex with the same hateful look, too. Does Luca know both of them already? Alright, let's not get too excited. Ah, uh, these people. 
Letting out a long sigh, Isaac pinches the bridge of his nose with his thumb and forefinger. It seems there's some miscommunication, miscommunication over here, going on here, you see. I'll split your fucking skull open! That's Rex, it should be. It should be him. During Isaac's second attempt to explain the situation to me, an entirely different noise splits uh, through the air. Oh yeah? I'd like to see him try. <laughs> the not-so-distant sound of a fight floods towards us from a neighboring alleyway. It's not just two voices either. Actually, it sounds more like uh, a, a lot more than that. Like a party of the worst bloodiest kind. Ugh. This is getting to be downright comical. Of course, they decide to go at it tonight. Animals, really. Despite the scornful nature of his words, Isaac seems to brighten up all of a sudden. All of a sudden. Damn it! Why are they? Why are the clans fighting now, of, of all times? Is every vampire in San Francisco out here tonight? Lucas sounds irritated. Even though Isaac is obviously pleased, some kind of gang war must uh, must be going on. The second I open my mouth to ask a question, however, Isaac takes off running, directly uh, directly towards the source of the noise. Wait, Isaac, where are you? Lucas starts to jog off, uh, jog after Isaac with an exasperated cry. Glaring at the other man's black, uh, on the other man's back. Sorry, uh, off you go, Dominic. Sorry, I wish I could have go with you forever, but I'm going after Rex this time. At the same time, Dominic turns to head in the opposite direction, apparently disinterested. His long strides take him towards the end of the alley quickly, making it clear that he doesn't want to stick around. Rex, however, takes a beeline straight for me. Just you and me now, baby. Don't be shy. Oh boy. Oh boy! This night just went from bad to awful in the span of about 15 minutes. But if I want to figure out what the hell's going on with these guys, I'd better sh choose what to do right now. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here because obviously you guys would know what I'm going after. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.